she then picks up the child and hands it to the man uh, as she puts on her coat as well. And they go and they hug each other for a moment. And she looks once again, I'm sorry, Randall, but every mage says that you you have failed the magical test and this we're only allowed one child. I'm sorry. And she turns and together they start walking out the door. Um, as a test, Randall's gonna try and detect magic in the room. Okay. Uh, you go ahead. Your detect detection works, but absolutely nothing lights up. This is all very simple and plain, mundane. Um, and as you are kind of looking around the room, you notice the um, young man's arm actually just passes right through you. Randall casts detect magic on the two, or uh, sorry, not detect magic. Uh, detect thoughts on the two. Okay, you go ahead and detect thoughts and. Um, they are um, extreme, extremely grieved at the moment. Um, uh, sorry, I was reading. Um, the The thoughts that you're getting are, uh, yeah, that of grief and that of having to take the the child to the headmaster of Gloriana. There's nobody else in the room. No, just the just the three of them and you. Randall is going to step in front of them and yell, "Hey!" They act as if they can't hear you or have no knowledge of your presence. He tries to poke the lady in the face, in the forehead. Your, fi your finger goes right through her forehead, and they when, start approaching the door. When Randall shouts, "Hey!" Is he saying it in the library too? No. Okay, just double checking. He'll side himself. Mm, okay. And then he's going to follow closely behind the two. Okay. Um, he's so he's they... not even going to try and be stealthy at this point. He's just going to follow okay. about five feet behind him. Yeah, absolutely no one pays you any heed. Um, it's as if you don't exist. And... Um, Yeah, well, they, they lead you through the streets um, of this uh, very large, actually glorious city. Um, there is um, very, to your understanding of magic, this is it's very simple and rudiment, but it is inspired. It is creative. The way they're using them uh, is, is quite unique to the city. And they, they walk through and they walk to it a large, grandiose um, castle. Um, and uh, they, uh, the couple stops and they look at each other. I think this is his place. Okay. And they both of them kiss the child on the forehead. Good luck, Randall, as they set, set the baby down on the steps and just quickly run away. He just says nothing and stares at them as they walk away. He will literally stare at them until they fade out of out of sight. They yeah, eventually they just disappear, leaving the baby crying on the front steps. He'll then stay by the baby and just wait. About 15 minutes later, door opens. You can see a, um, a, a, a kid opens the door and you, you know, you re recognize a, a school uniform. And, uh, you, you're, well, hey, teacher, teacher, there's something on the doorstep. And a few moments later, you the, uh, a man comes out dressed as a professor and s scoops up the child and they, they walk inside the room, closing the door, leaving you behind. Uh, Brandon tries to put his hand through the door. 
he can't hit it hard. I open the door. Door doesn't open. It's you. You can feel the handle turn as if it's unlocked, but you can't get in. I cast knock on the door. Nothing happens. A moment later, you once again blink. And your eyes open. You find yourself in the library once again. You see everyone standing there, staring at you. You see uh, Scaly, still sipping his tea. How did that make you feel? He just says nothing as he's deep in thought. Is he back? Yeah, you guys can see Randall now starts to take motion. He's he's clearly come to. Tell me, young man. How do you feel? What did you see? Have to do any fighting? It was my past. Depressing stuff. I understand why they did what they did, but I don't agree with it. Not much else to say, really. Tell me, Randall, what would you have done if you were them? As he kind of leans back and crosses his arms, being very careful to hold his tea um, perfectly balanced. I'm not sure, to be honest. They made the hardest decision of their lives to abandon me like that. Good. Good. Very good, Randall. Please, step to the side then. Who wishes to go next? Is there a chair nearby? There is. He's just going to kind of collapse into one. Going to kind of bury his face in his hands. Who wishes to go next? Uh, Sin will shift side to side. Looking I everywhere but at everyone. I, I, I shove Sin forward. <laughs> you ass! Good! Good, please. Step no. into the circle, Sin. I look back at the group. I'm not ready for this. I just give her a thumbs up. She grimaces. But then she nods her head, takes in a deep breath, and steps into the circle. He steps forward. Remember, what you see at the time is real. You are in ever-present danger. Be aware of that. Are you ready, Sin? What do you mean by danger? Sin. This will be, be okay. Linder. He reaches forward to place his hand on your shoulder. I don't stop him. He places his hand on your shoulder, and then when the time comes and you blink once again, you open your eyes, and you're in a dark cell. There is no. a single candle in front of you. Your hands are shackled with thick chains to a cross behind you, keeping you very tight and at bay. Your feet are manacled to a loop in the floor. You can only move, but a mere foot, very little in each direction. There is a small window that you assume is directly behind you that lets in, but a spot of moonlight. And as you look around, you see mold, mildew. The smell is horrifying. You can smell dead, decaying bodies. You can smell excrement. You can smell um, just the bitterness and the cold that is there. You shiver as a breeze blows by you. And you look forward and see, just beyond the candle, there is a mirror in front of you. What do I? What do I look like? You look into the mirror, and you see the face of an extremely aged and old elven woman, hair wispy and white, blowing in the light breeze. 
you see your eyes in that face. God. As you look, as you look to the left and right, your your hands and your legs and your feet, which are bare, um, you're only wearing just a tattered burlap sack, pretty much covering your torso, your chest, and um, your your bottom section. And you look, your arms, hands, wrinkly with age. Your wrists are. You can see the impression of the chains as they bind your wrists together, or I'm sorry, these but bind the, your wrists to the cross behind you. What do you do? So clearly I recognize myself in the mirror, correct? Yes. An older self, though. Yes, you realize that the face in the mirror in front of you is at least 500 years older than you are now. <sighs> Uh, can I hear anything other than myself in this jail cell? Nothing, nothing but cries for mercy and moans of pain. Am I in hell? <laughs> oh my gosh. Um. Uh, I guess I'll, 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 um, try to look out the cell. Clearly, I can't move very far because of the chains. Correct. Correct. You can barely shift from side to side. Um, Your hands guess, themselves don't move any more than six inches in any given direction. Uh, I'll call out meekly, uh, he hello? You call out, and your voice is raspy. It's old. Oh, it's an old your throat, voice. Your throat is tortured by from years of whatever this environment is, and smoke, and just decay. Doesn't seem to be any reply. Can I try a spell? Sure. You try to go for a spell, and any time you try to reach for that that magic, that that connection that you're used to feeling, it just escapes you. Like you can you can sense it; it's there, but it's ever just beyond your grasp. Like like in the Citadel. Kind of, um, except for this, there, there's something preventing you. It's not like a, it's not like an anti magic field, but there is something. Whether it's just your your will has been broken, or um, you just are physically not capable of casting these spells, there's something physically with your body that is preventing you from casting anything. Uh, breathing heavily now, because clearly this is freaking mess up like like this is messed up um because she's not an old woman yet so seeing yourself old is and ugly looking is not exactly ideal um i'm gonna try and shake the chains as loudly as i can all right you do so and it's actually quite a loud shake however when you go to shake them these heavy chains what you would have th thought in your what we'll just say is your youth. It would have been a fairly easy thing to, to move these back and forth and whip them around. With this, your old, tired muscles strain against every movement of the chains. Oh gosh, I've lost all my strength too. <laughs> and as you do so, you hear some, you the, the chains jingle. And a moment later, you hear a voice, a very extremely familiar voice. It's amazing what 600 years can do to the youthful. And a figure steps out from behind the mirror. Is it Malgus? And you look forward. And the face is immediately recognizable. You see your father standing in front of you. What? However, your father, instead of the, the beautiful elven pale skin and the pointed ears that you're used to seeing, dull gray skin. You see a drow in front of you, but your, your father's perfect features. It is most certainly your father as a drow. This is impossible. I say that in character. Nothing is impossible when you change realms. You should know that by now, Sin, my daughter. Why do you have me here? This is where everyone goes when they die. It's amazing, isn't it? 
the souls of the tortured and the damned. Wait, what the... You're saying I'm dead? Oh, very much so. Why am I bound to these chains? If, if I'm your... dead, I shouldn't be here at all. This is your punishment, my daughter. You wanted to be free, and you broke every, every oath, every honor bounding you to the castle. This is your I... punishment for eternity. Enjoy. I never broke anything! And he steps away. I didn't break anything! You hear footsteps of rich, solid shoes. Walking away, clacking I said the I floor. didn't break anything! <sighs> ah! A moment later, you blink once again, and you see yourself in the library. Back is youthful sin. I, um, I, like, pat myself everywhere to make sure that I am who I am. And I take in a deep breath. Is there, like, a mirror in this library room? There is not. Ah, dang it. Uh, oh, oh, who's wearing armor? Is... <laughs> is Kurt Kurt, wearing armor? Kurt wears wearing mithril plate armor, yes. The Which virtuoso is carries a, a mirror, always. <laughs> Well, I'm going to run to Kern, and I'm going to look at myself, at my reflection inside. Yeah, no, it's, you can recognize yourself. Alright, uh, before I was, like, heavy, panically breathing, and then I, and then I, like, I'm starting to calm her down, but I'm still, like, freaking out. Well? <sighs> Sin? What? What, you? I don't know what that trickery was. He cocks his head to the side, gives a kind of a wry smile. Tell me, Sin, how do you feel? What do you expect me to say? Uh, upset? Uh, disbelieved? That, that couldn't have been real. There's, there's no way that was real. It could be, very much so. No, no. Tell me. Your emotions, where do they lie? What emotions? The emotions I felt in the moment of looking at a lie? Of course those were truth. But knowing now that it's a lie, then... Then... Then yes, it's not real. How did you feel when you saw your father? How did you know what I saw? He you, smiles, even a little bit bigger it. now. I only saw what you see. It is not I who creates. Well, whatever. I made it through it, right? Tell me, how did you feel when you saw your father? I told you! Upset! Scared! Betrayed! That thing was not my father! He nods his head. Very well. Very good. Would anyone else like to test their fate and their destiny? Yes, I suppose I should get it over with. That's how he takes the back of the group. What? Say what? It was like a it was like you're fading away talking. I'm going to step forward. Okay. You step in the circle, and as with everyone else, he gives you the warning that what you see is very real. And he uh, sends you, as, or I shouldn't say he sends you, but you open your eyes, and you feel water dripping down from the sky. You look up, there is black, gray, menacing-looking clouds from above. You see lightning strike from one cloud to the next. Rain starts to pour down as it crashes into your weathered, scaly skin. Ew. The drops, quite large in fact, Every time they make contact with you, it feels like sandpaper rubbing, rubbing against your skin, which is coarse with enduring the elements. 
you look down at yourself, your clothes. Nothing of the grandeur that you're used to, but they are torn, tattered, beaten, worn, almost non-existent. The threads are very thin. They provide no cover from the breeze and the wind. You look out. You are sitting on a cobblestone road. You see people walking back and forth, wearing their cowls and their hoods and their cloaks, keeping out of the weather. Everyone that passes by is keeping at least a 10-foot uh, width from you. And as you continue to look around, you see, sitting just by your feet, a small plate, which has a couple of copper pieces in it. And as you look on, the crowd just seems to pass by, giving you plenty of room, keeping, letting you be on your own. What do you do? I uh, pick up one of the coins. Okay. I, uh, is, is it like a copper piece, you said? Yeah, it's just a copper piece, and you pick it up, and it's cold in your hands. I, uh, I try to bite it. It's very real. <laughs> Ugh. I'm... Is there any, like, buildings nearby? There is. There's the one you're leaning on. You're basically right now in a street of buildings lining either side. I, uh... I kick the, the, the plate away. And I stand up. And, uh... I go... <laughs> I look at my skin and I'm just like... Well, that's atrocious. This place could use some color. You hear from behind you the voice of a little girl. What is it, Mommy? And, and you turn and look, and this just little girl with, with uh, curled short hair, finger pointed directly at you. And s second later, you see what she supposes her mother comes and scoops up the girl, and they run away literally run away, but dropping a couple pieces of copper in your direction. I, I don't need your money, thank you. And, uh, as you talk and you say that, your your regular voice, your, your sultry, smooth, kind of caressing voice, as it were, is replaced by a raspy, leathery voice. This is depressing. People pass by you without even giving you a second look. In fact, they avoid eye contact at all costs. Your face is exposed to everyone. and Nobody cares. I'll pick up the dish. I'll start just walking down the street, shaking it. People... Um, like, as, as soon as they realize that you're next to them, they, like, jump and, like, try to keep themselves a few feet away from you, but most of them are kind enough to offer you a couple of copper pieces. All right. Most of them. I'm, I'm sorry, I, I hope you can get a home sometime. Streets are not kind to people. Please be careful. Things of that nature. Okay. I'm just going to keep wandering the streets. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> okay. After some time passes and you amass about 11 copper coins, your return to the library. You see your friends there. He holds up his, he pulls out his mirror and holds it up. It's your beautiful self. <clears throat> he fixes the mask a little bit. Well, that was incredibly depressing. Now, Jin, tell me, I'm going to ask you a very different question. What did you learn? That beggars are very lonely and old. He smiles. Is that all? 
Well. I'm, I'm not quite sure. I... I think... Hmm. I'll have to think about that. I'll give you until the next person is done. Who is next? Is anyone next? I will go. Excellent young Fairblade, please, into the circle. I step in and take you a deep in. breath. He gives you the same spiel, sets his hand on your shoulder. Mm -hmm. And you find yourself up above your home city of Cobblestop, looking down into the streets. You see the two airships, proud and glorious, being prepared for their launch. You see decorations being set up. You see parades started. You see festivities going on. You realize the launch day is huh. near. It's it's a large event. People are excited, cheery, running awesome. about. Is this something? Is this something I recognize, or is this something that I've never seen before? I mean, not you, like a, a celebration. I mean, like, is this something a man, or you know, an event I was part of my past or something? You, um, so you know about the airships? Mm -hmm. uh, they were still um, in construction when you uh, last saw them or last heard of them. But it seems mm -hmm. as if this is either in the future a little bit or right now an, alter an alternate space and time or yeah it's it's something that could be in your future i got you i got you so uh kind of looking around my my worry kind of dissipates and i realize oh i'm here for a celebration you know this event is different for me everyone else was kind of upset about what they saw but i'm gonna be happy all right so i kind of like take a breath of relief <sighs> okay. And as soon as you do so, your vision is sh uh, shoved forward, down towards the ground, down towards the heart of Cobblestop. Um, so I'm down. I'm down there, or am I just looking? Yeah, down you're, there? you're you're down there. You you look and you see your your body is you're now shoved into your body itself. And as you look on, you look. There's your parents' shop, the silversmiths. Um, and it's not burned down. It is not. However. Oh. Windows oh. are broken in. You mm. see your brother standing in front of the shop, kind of looking on. There's a black hooded figure standing next to your uh, your brother. As they look in, and you you peer beyond your brother, and you see just inside the shop, um, there's a a couple of individuals who are covered in masks and masks. Uh, ma uh, yeah. They are covered in hoods and masks, and. Uh, they're just looting the place, taking the tools, the silver, everything, and um, it's destroying whatever they don't care about. And as you look mm -hmm. beyond, you see that there's the little waiting area that sits in the foyer. There is, um, you see your parents sitting mm -hmm. on the couch. They are tied together. You can see worry written all over their faces. You can see they're not looking at each other, but they're looking at your brother. And as you continue to examine them, you see their abdomens, where their usual fine clothes are, are now stained with a crimson red. As you see dagger points that have been pierced into their abdomens, they're bleeding out. And he rightfully... And, and Brightly is just outside the the house. He's just kind of looking out. You're you're sitting. So uh, there's the shop, mm -hmm, and your mm -hmm. brother is about fifteen twenty feet from in front of the shop. You're about twenty to thirty feet behind him. And as you look on, you hear your brother say to the masked figure, he "says If you take me now, and my soul, you promise they will live longer." And you see the black figure nod very slowly and your brother says take me now then and immediately the two shake hands and you see them just disappear in front of your eyes i just freeze and i i, I kind of freeze up and i don't know what to do you and see then... black smoke where the black where the where the figure was and you feel where, where bright as, was where no 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 where where your brother was 
Oh yeah, that's that's my brother, Brightblade. Sorry. Oh yeah, yeah. Sorry. Um. Yeah, the, you see just the the black smoke that was left, and you just feel the evil presence come, go, and now you're left standing there, looking on as your parents slowly close their eyes and fade from life. Is that masked figure still there? No, the figure is gone. So it's just my parents dead inside the house, and my yep. brother sold his soul to the masked figure who's also gone. Yep, they disappeared together, and the robbers now have everything they need. They've got a large sack over their shoulder, and they're running away. I chase after them. All right, you, you begin the chase. And uh, I, I grab my uh, weapon, uh, say Lotus Lance to make it go uh, acidy, and uh, I start to, to run after them. Okay. And I say, hey, you get back here. Doesn't turn and look, just continues to run you, as you slowly gain on them. Um, when I finally catch up to them, I try to use my uh, rapier to slice uh, on their foot or on their leg. Okay, you go and slice, and you know this was a clean hit, except for it just goes right through their ankle. With no damage? No damage, just goes right through. You realize you're not actually there. And then a moment later, you find yourself in the library. Scaly looking on at you. Tell me, Fairblade, how do you feel? Angry. But also sad. I know what my brother Go ahead. I know I know what my brother did was for our parents but he was tricked and my parents they didn't deserve that they they didn't deserve any of that I close my eyes and uh fight back tears he goes and he puts his hand on your shoulder reassuringly. That's very good, Fairblade. Very good. He turns over to to um, Virtuoso, hand still on Fairblade's shoulder. Now, tell me, what have you learned? That the world can be a very lonely place without friends. That will work. Well done. Now, either of you two going to join in? I, I guess at this point I do step out of the circle, is that right? Yeah. He okay, kind of, of very gently ushers you out. I gesture over at Tally. Ladies first. Go ahead. <laughs> I <Got> step <laughs> forward. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no right, witty Curtis. response. Just let's go. Let's do step this. Step into the circle. Yeah. All right. So you step into the circle once again. You are told everything is real. It was like how real? Extremely. And he places his hand on your shoulder. And. Unlike the others that found themselves in a place, you have the sensation of waking up. You find yourself in a bed, a very large bed, lots of blankets, very um, very posh, actually. Everything's soft, thick, warm, comfortable. You look around the room. It's rich. Uh, it's very uh, exuberantly um, decored and uh, looks magnificent. You look around, there is a note left on your bedside, which you can actually read very clearly. It's Coronation Day. 
I can read. You could be. You were to be crowned king. You were to be crowned lord of the city. Is and... so the rooms like not familiar or anything? Nope. Nothing familiar. You've okay. Never seen this before. And okay, so the, the you note go says crowning day. Okay. Coronation. Yeah. Coronation day. Yeah. You were to become lord of whatever whatever city this is, and you throw off the blankets, and as you do so, you realize your arm. It's not muscular like you remember. It's kind of skinny. Maybe a little bit of a pudge to it. You look down. You've got a bit of a got a little bit of a noble's gut. And uh, yeah, you you look on, and uh, a moment later, door swings open. You see your sister walk through the door. She smiles at you. Congratulations, brother! And walks forward. She has a huge. Uh, tray of food in front of her uh, everything that you you know to be delicious um, there's even breakfast meat in there and she brings it forward and sets it on the bed breakfast in bed for the new lord and she kind of gives you a little punch on the shoulder just a very playful eat up wouldn't want to not have energy for this grand day uh, before, uh, is she attempting to walk away, or...? No, she actually sits down on your bedside and kind of, like, ushers you, like, makes a little motion, like, eat up, eat up. Okay, before that happens, I pull her in for a, for a good hug. She... I, I, I thought I lost you. She kind of pushes you back. Brother! You okay? I don't know. I thought yeah. I lost you. But you're here. I'm right here, you silly. Now eat up. And she she stands up from the bed. Let's give like a skeptical look and then just proceed to eating. She uh, starts taking a couple of steps towards the door when you watch her. She just mid-step goes stiff and falls flat on her face on the floor. I, uh... I throw the food to off the bed, like, to the side, and I rush over. All right. Hey, you rush over. She is as stiff as a board on the ground. I, um, pull pull her up to, like, um, like, kind of, like, like, I'm on my knees, so I, like, pull her up on my lap, and then I got, like, her head in my arms, and I'm checking her for, like, a pulse. Is she alive? As you spin her around and check, you, you go immediately for the wrist, and... There's no flesh. There's no muscle. It's bone. So she turned Bleached. into a skeleton? And you look up at her face and it's ancient, bleached, beaten, broken skull. Empty eyes piercing your soul. Just looks dead straight on. Unmoving. Unflinching. And as you continue to hold the skeletal frame... It just begins to disintegrate into sand. I just, uh, I, <laughs> I bite my lip until it starts to bleed. And then, uh, some tears start coming down. I just think to myself, like, oh, I'm gonna make that guy pay. And a second later, you find yourself in the library. I honestly thought you were gonna do a different approach with that, but cool, I like it. Scaly looks at you. Now tell me, Kern, how did you feel? How do you feel now? I still feel as lost as I ever been. And I wish my family was still here. But I realize they'll never come back. So you experience sorrow? Like it never left. Good, very good. And last but not least, Tally, please step forward. Tally stiffens for a second before slowly taking a step forward. All right, you step in. He, he notices you're stiff. It's okay to be scared. It's very okay. Beware. 
everything you see is certainly real as he reaches and puts his hand on your shoulder. And you find yourself a little girl skipping through the village, which you, you know so well. You uh, examine your surroundings and yourself, and you realize you have four arms. This is soon after you've learned how to do that. You go through and you start telling everybody what you found and how you've discovered it, showing off. and Everybody is quite curious. They, they come in and check and uh, see what kind of marvelous thing you've done. And as you're doing so, several moments later, the village elder arrives. He comes and looks down at you, and the expected smile and well done is not there. In fact, it is replaced by a look of disgust. He looks down at you, old wrinkled lizard skin, scales, old... Um, deep crevasses between each with age and um, it kind of rustles every motion he makes as the scales themselves rub on each other. Tally, what have you done? It looks on with a glare. Was there a sentence there? Yes. Uh, the the elder looks at you. Tally, what have you done? I uh, glare up back at, but say nothing. You do realize that you have become an abomination. You are nothing but a cur. Fit for not even our own mouths. You have become that which we despise. What do you have to say for yourself? I glower up at him for a minute longer. If that is all you have to say, then be gone. You are now an outsider. You are impure. You do not belong with lizard kind anymore. I was always an outsider. I snarl. And I take off. And as you start to... Are you running away? I uh, run towards the outskirts of the village. Alright. And as you take a step, you actually feel from across your back a, a solid thwack of a, um, a walking stick across your lower back, just above your tail. Be gone, cure! You hear several other voices piping up. and Just continue to run away. Kelly? I, uh, I snarl feeling the strike and turn around. Don't. <clears throat> See one of the village hunters kind of sitting there with his walking staff, just kind of pounding it into his open palm. I'm not a child anymore. I snarl at him. He just kind of smiles back at you with a very cruel, menacing smile. Takes a step forward and begins to raise the staff again. I, uh, let out a snarling hiss and lunge at him, claws out. All right. Um... Yeah, you do. So you, you reach out and you go ahead and uh, strike at him. I actually need you to roll the hit. And I would like you to make this. So it's a d20 roll. 
and you're going to add um, three to hit. Because this is a different version of yourself. Okay. Plus three to hit? Yes. Ooh. Yeah, you go and you uh, step forward and slash at him, and he just very deftly steps to the side, doesn't even bother letting your claws scratch him the least bit, and they uh, kind of surround you, and he just whacks you on the side of the head with staff. Be gone! You're no longer wanted here. As more and more of them start to pick up sticks and rocks and start to walk forward towards you. I shift back and forth, snarling. And decide it's not worth it. I take off into the marsh. Okay. So you head out. Um, you continue to run for quite a distance. And eventually as you run, you hear the voices from behind you get quiet. As more and more people continue to give up the chase. And eventually you run and run and find yourself in the library again. You see uh, uh, Scaly looks, looks at you. Now, when you confronted the village elder, how did you feel? Hello? Sally? Sorry. Could you not hear me? No, we could not. Alright. Uh, Go <laughs> He with, withdraws his arm, holds his teacup with two hands, takes a sip. Tell me, how did you feel when you were confronted? There's foolish and closed mind bits in there. Yes, that there are. But, how do you deal with them? How did you feel about that? He takes another sip. I deal with leaving them. Forgetting. How, how would you- sorry, can you say that again? You were chopping up. Pardon? I said you were chopping out. I couldn't quite hear what you said. I deal with them by leaving them behind. Forgetting them. They're not worth it. Well. Seems as if most of you have done well. He says as he looks towards everyone. Now that you are emotionally drained. It is time for the last leg of your journey. Please, everyone in the emotions towards the circle, step in once again. Hopefully the next trial is easier, because that was messed up, old man. 
He smiles. It is not my choice, but the gods. I uh, wait for everyone else to get into the circle, watching them all carefully. I do step in as well. Okay. I'm concerned. Did I? Yeah. Step in. All right. So uh, everyone steps in. And he looks at all of you. Remember, the trials that you all face are always dangerous. This one, deadly. Beware. It's time for the trial by fire. Prepare yourselves as he takes his hand and once again goes to touch the circle on the ground. And as the circle comes uh, all the way around and touches on the other side of you guys, you see a blaring white light, which turns to red, then to yellow. And you find yourselves on the edge of an active volcano, lava pouring forward. And here's what you are presented with. Hey, can, can you describe the volcano again? Are we where are we standing? So you are standing on a small little plateau, uh, in between two rivers of magma. Oh wow! Uh, so it is flowing from the north to the south, um, in a very heavy, slow molten flow. Are we on kind of like a football shape? Yes. Okay. It's a small little plateau that keeps you guys um, from falling into the lava. Uh, you look, and there seems to be some more landmass over on the other side to the west there. And immediately the heat strikes you. It's well over it's well over a hundred degrees, pushing into the 150, 140 range. It is highly uncomfortable. You Pretty guys look around. Heat, but not this heat. And you look around and all you see is just slow. Molten magma dripping and draining by. The only light seems to come from the magma itself as it lights the entire area in a cool yellow glow. You look up, it's a starless, moonless night, completely pitch black. The only thing to remind you that there's a sky is a few clouds that are also basked in that yellowish light from the from the volcano itself. And the magma stretches as far as we can see? From from the north to the south, it's just an unending river. And to the east and the west? Um, you see multiple um, rivers of the magma itself. Ah, all stretching okay. in different directions, but endless. And, and how far away is the closest landmass on either side? Um, to the east of you. Mm-hmm. Um, there is like a lake of magma that prevents you from going over. And to the west, you can see that there's um, a few rocks and high places in the magma itself where you could jump over to the other side. And there's another landmass there, which then is immediately on the other side by a lake of magma. I try to use create water. Okay. What do you create water on? Uh, like by the, well, how far? Trying to figure out how far away the lava is. Um, I guess I I cast it in this area. Okay, yeah, you cast it in that area, and it hits the rock, and the rock immediately cracks and shatters, but the water also dissipates immediately. So water doesn't hit the magma at all. It doesn't solidify even a little bit. No, it. It evaporates before it even makes it there. The magma is hundreds and hundreds of degrees. So it's like instant steam when it gets to the magma. Yeah. Okay. Sorry, sorry, Gabe. I didn't realize that it was up on roll twenty. I thought it was like it was, we're still just. Um, <laughs> oh, verbally. Yeah, yeah. I didn't think it would be. A, I knew it was a trial by fire. I didn't think it'd be literally fire. This isn't literal fire. Like, I've never seen this before. It's quite uncomfortable. I say we get out of here. Yes, but are, how? Are we technically in the library still? Do a 
perception check to see if I like see anybody but us. Okay, go for it. Cool. So as you look around, you don't see any other humans. You definitely don't see any books in the library. Um, and you look around and you swear at the corner of your eye, you see um, a bulbous head, childlike figure, face sticking out from under the magma before it just dips back in. <laughs> Glad Do I, I didn't see that see too? That. Did, did anyone see that? You gotta roll. Let's say, no, Kern already. Telling, I'm just telling you guys. Yeah. See did, what? Did What'd you see, see Kern? That? See what? What'd you see, Kern? And then I put my goggles on and roll perception. I saw some child's head come out of the lava. A I, child's I head? Know. Well, it peeked out and went back under. I don't know. Yeah, you look around, you don't see anything, just rock flowing magma. Detect magic. Yeah, well. I'm fanning with myself with my hand. All right, uh, you throw on detect magic and um, let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see. Da, 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 da. All right, you see um, uh, nothing. You don't detect any magical auras, but but your magical detection works. That is the thing. Yeah, I get into a ready stance in case something tries to come out. Apparently, I was the only one that saw it, but I keep I stay ready. How far away was it, Kern? Where you was saw it, Gabe? Please over us. in this area here. I uh, I I trod over there. I trod over there, and I start pointing at the lava. It's like ah, that's where the child popped up. Well, is All it right. painful to be near the lava, or no? It's it, yeah, it it's be. much it gets much hotter, but you can still be there. Um, and as you um, are standing there, as you are standing there, a hand reaches out from the magma and grasps you on your ankle. And I need <gasps> you guys to all all roll initiative. 